I come to our time of confession. Well, this Thursday, our nation celebrates Thanksgiving. So in the spirit of Jesus' exhortation to give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God's what is God's, we should in fact lead the nation in Thanksgiving. But before talking about how we do that, um, I wanted to give a quick historical aside about the church calendar. So the church used to hold to, had a calendar full of celebrations throughout the year. This example began with Israel uh, when God required them to celebrate regularly at predetermined times set out by God. And you can read more about that in Leviticus 23 if you want to um, study that further. And these feasts had various purposes. You had some that were to remember the salvific works of God, for instance, celebrating the Passover or celebrating the Feast of Booth, which followed the Day of Atonement. So these, uh, but then you also had uh, celebrations uh, that were more Thanksgiving-like, the celebrations of first fruits, where you brought your crops before the Lord. After Jesus' death and resurrection, the early Christian church's calendar began, for the most part, to have three cycles for their celebration. And so pulling from some research from James Jordan, the primary one was centered on the life and work of Jesus Christ. The second one centered on the observation of great days of church history. What that meant was like saints' days, days which various heroes of the faith had been martyred. And then the third cycle was on agricultural events, days of thanksgiving, special times of prayer for crops, those types of events. Now, as time progressed, more saints became numbered um, as the church grew. And, but also these saints' days uh, began to become corrupted with superstition. And so during the Reformation, you had groups, reforming, reformed groups, either do away with all of these uh, festival days or just parts of them. For instance, John Calvin, um, he kept Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost and the Lord's Day, but then got away with all others. And then, on, uh, and then like the Puritans and some of the early Baptists, they got rid of everything except for the Lord's Day. And since the Puritans were so influential in the founding of our nation, we're downstream a lot of that cultural um, influence. So uh, our nation has, still does recognize many Christian holidays, decidedly Christmas and Easter, but then there's lots of other days that uh, are more secularized. However, um, we, there, we, don't, we could explore and spend some time to think, why are we a people who desire so much rhythm in our lives, like a yearly rhythm? We won't go into that today, but we just recognize God made us that way. Uh, so getting back to f focusing on how can we be the best thankful Thanksgiving celebrators, it's, Thanksgiving is a great day to focus our hearts and minds on the task of being thankful, which is what we're called to as Christians already. So for instance, the psalmist uh, exhorts us to, or to sing, it's good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. And then elsewhere, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. And then elsewhere, the one who offers thanksgiving as a sacrifice glorifies me. To the one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Um, and then another one, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him in songs of praise. And there's plenty more. I'll stop there. We sh should we reflect uh, this Thanksgiving on pilgrims? You know, so when we watch Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving or whatever, that's not a bad thing to do. We can be thankful for many people and many events throughout our nation's history. Uh, and we should thank God for those things. However, uh, in giving God to what is God's, he, were, he uh, commands us to have thankful hearts all the time. It's not just a Thanksgiving event. You know, you, you got it out of your system and then you can go the rest of the year. We'll come back around in November and let's thanks, thanks God, thank God again. No, we are to live a life full of thankfulness. Because uh, thankfulness is a response of a Christian living in faith before a good God. Because our God blesses us, the faithful have not only been asking fervently in prayer for these blessings, but they also have eyes to see God's graciousness towards us. So another way of saying this is, thankfulness comes easy and is natural for those 
who have already given themselves over to a life of dependence upon God. Paul exhorts the Corinthians church. This is the reality of, of our lives. What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? So this Thanksgiving, let's rejoice and celebrate. Give thanks to God, for he has given us all that we need. He gives liberally and delights to bless his children. This